I'd like to begin by clarifying two terms, temperature and heat. These two are not the same. Heat is thermal energy, having units of joules or calories, or some variation of it, like kilojoules or kilocalories. And temperature is a measurement of heat transfer. When temperature on a thermometer increases, that means heat is transferred into a system. When temperature on a thermometer decreases, that means heat was transferred out of the system. I'd like to give you a sense of what specific heat means. Sometimes specific heat is also called heat capacity or molar heat capacity. I'd like to do this by comparing the specific heats of two substances, water and gold. Water has a relatively high specific heat, 4.18 joules per gram degree C, and that of gold is only 0.126 joules per gram degree C. I like to get into the units of the specific heat. In the numerator, there's joules, and joules is a unit of heat. The larger the number in the numerator, the larger the amount of heat. In the denominator, it can be read as per one gram of the substance per one degree Celsius. Now the numerator is probably pretty self-explanatory. Let's try to understand what the denominator means a little bit more in detail. So for every gram of water, for example, it takes 4.18 joules of heat to raise the temperature one degree Celsius. As compared to gold, it only takes 0.126 joules of heat for every gram of gold to raise the temperature of gold one degree. So you don't need that much heat to increase the temperature of gold but you need quite a bit of heat to increase the temperature of water. And this illustration, I believe, shows that quite nicely. Given equal amounts of each substance, one kilogram of gold and one kilogram of water, and we'll assume equal amounts of heat are delivered to each substance, we can see the large temperature change in gold because very little heat is needed per gram of gold to change the temperature. As compared to water, a large amount of heat is needed per gram of water to change the temperature. In this problem, you're asked to determine the final temperature of a metal that was heated and then placed in room temperature water, as shown by the illustration. Here are two useful equations that are related to this topic of heat transfer. Q water equals negative Q metal. Q represents heat and this equation simply shows the transfer of heat from the metal to the water. The metal losing the heat, therefore the negative sign in front of its Q and the water gaining the heat. The equation to the right defines Q. Q is the mass of the substance times the specific heat of the substance times the temperature change of the substance. I recommend setting up a table where you can see all the information you're given and what you need to find. In this case, we're asked to determine the final temperature, which is the same for both the water and the aluminum. The C of the specific heats can be looked up in reference tables. Now it's a matter of substituting the correct numbers into the equation. After doing so, it becomes an algebra problem to solve for T final. In this problem, you're asked to determine the specific heat of nickel. I like to rewrite the given information in some organized fashion. Of the two equations we saw so far that apply to heat transfer, this here, Q equals MC delta T, is the one we're going to use. Because it includes the specific heat, and you can solve for the specific heat as follows. 
Then just substitute the values in from the given information, keeping the appropriate units of joules, grams, and degrees Celsius. You'll come up with 0.417 joules per gram degree C.